The accepted idea seems to be that as institutional orders of shared belief, value, culture, and religion break down under the pressures of modernity, chaos, increased risk and ambiguity, anomie, etc., all inevitably increase unless new institutionalized forms of social relationship replace them. This is how Durkheim is often interpreted, although it is not what he argued. It is both the warning and the promise for a modernity in which persons can become increasingly free from institutional constraint, but free to confront increasing chaos and alienation. The argument that both self and meaning are grounded in constitutive interaction orders that require a, require a strong working commitment to principles of reciprocity offers a quite different picture of what modernity might have to offer. What would a conception of democratic institutions modeled on this foundation look like? If we accept that institutions are not actually consti constituting the order of action that occurs within them, but only acting as a sort of referee, could we structure institutions differently to serve our purposes better? Could we alter the processes of accountability such that they actually change the play in ways that make it more fair? Could we make formal institutional structures more compatible with the constitutive interaction orders that support and underlie modern social life? The idea of constitutive interaction order offers a new way of understanding what this might mean. More importantly, the idea of constitutive interaction order and of self and sense-making resting on a working consensus offer a new way of understanding social order, social facts, social persons, and their relationship to social institutions in modern differentiated societies that hope to be democratic. If meaningful and fulfilling social life in modern differentiated societies requires a democratic form of underlying constitutive interaction order to support both mutual intelligibility and self, then to the extent that institutional or structural factors interfere with this process, they undermine the possibility of democracy. While it is true that constitutive interaction orders resist institutional constraint, it is also true that selves will retreat from interactional contexts in which their integrity is threatened. This can result in a kind of segmentation in a modern society in which selves tend to cluster together with those who share their condition of either oppression or privilege, sometimes mistaken for a cultural alignment. To the extent that this does happen, the broad foundation of overlapping constitutive interaction orders requir required for democratic life will not materialize, and Durkheim's warning that anomie could result from the lack of justice in such an abnormal social form could come to pass. This anomie, however, is caused not by a failure of social institutions or a failure of individuals to attend institutional order, but a failure of constitutive interaction order. A simple instance, Kaufman and Garfinkel both argue that the process by which a self is achieved involves an actor choosing to perform an identified self while other participants either ratify the performance or not. When I explored this idea with eth ethnically identified students in the US, international Spanish, Swedish, not just Arab and Black, they responded that in most public encounters with those not in their category as other, 
they are not given a chance to choose their own presentation of self. The word choose is of course a problem here, as no one really has the experience of choosing an authentic self, but what they describe is having thrust upon themselves a characterization of self that makes it impossible for them to act normally. White students do not recognize this distinction. It does not happen to them. Only ethnically identified and international students feel they have been typecast on site and given no benefit of the doubt. They recognize that in the interaction whatever they do will be seen light of the stereotype. The working consensus is not extended to them in these interactions, however bright the interactions appear to be. Whatever we make of the idea of choice, this is not the experience that most people have of walking up to a group of similar persons. A student walking up to talk to a group of students on the same campus. Most of us do this quite normally, thoughtlessly, and without the experience of being pigeonholed on the instant. It may happen sometimes, and just because it is so rare, it is memorable and upsetting. Ethnically identified and international students say it say it is what they come to expect as normal whenever they communicate with those who are not also outsiders. To the extent this is the case, it means that there are large numbers of persons in modern democratic society who are being denied access to the constitutive interaction order processes of achieving self that are required for democratic life. An understanding of this as an interaction order problem is a pressing concern with serious consequences for a world in which the presence of others is dramatically on the increase. It is my argument that an unworkable notion of social institutions and a still too static view of language and self pose problems for contemporary approaches to morality. The current focus on justification and the treatment of social facts as institutional phenomena creates inconsistencies. There is no way to distinguish those constitutive social orders that involve deep moral commitments from institutional orders which establish social inequalities and lend themselves to instrumental manipulation. The responsibility for dispensing and maintaining justice might best be overseen by the former rather than the latter. The problem with the idea of justice from this perspective is not with persons and their inconsistencies, as Amartya Sen has recently suggested, but with the identification of social order with institutions rather than with constitutive orders of action. It is in constitutive orders that reciprocities lie and where moral alignment and mutual attention are functional requirements. Importing what has been learned about the differences between formal contexts of accountability, social institutions, and constitutive orders of interaction into questions of ethics and morality could make a difference.